Hey everybody! Well today I thought we'd do a blast from the past with this right here. This is the Star Trek Generation Starship Enterprise D from Playmates. This is from 1994 when the movie came out. So this is now 28 years old. Now I used to have just about everything that Playmates made. Back in the 90s Playmates came out with a ton of really cool spaceships and props and action figures. In fact I had three walls completely covered in action figures of Star Trek and Star Wars and, and some a few odds and ends too. Eventually I ended up selling everything. I sold all those figures. I kept a few of the more important ones and then I uh, sold all the ships. But one of the ships that I always regretted selling was this one here. And the reason I like this one so much is because it had the special feature of the battle damage right here where the pieces would fly off and it had the blinking LEDs that kind of acted like it had the uh, battle damage. So uh, this came out when the movie came out. Now you'll notice that the battle damage doesn't really match what was in the movie. Of course, we now know that the, in the movie the saucer section actually just crashed and uh, pieces of it didn't blow off like they did here. So the reason this kind of discrepancy happens is uh, a lot of this happens with Lego as well. Is um, A company such as Paramount, who does Star Trek, will say, hey, uh, uh, Playmates, we want you to come out with a bunch of uh, cool toys for the new upcoming movie. And um, we'll just give you a general synopsis of what happens. They can't, they can't divulge the entire plot because they don't want that to get out. So they'll just simply say something like, uh, the Enterprise suffers major damage and um, possibly gets destroyed, and especially in the saucer section. And they kind of probably leave it vague. And so from there, Playmates has to come up with this Enterprise, knowing you know this vague information, and just kind of come up with uh, what they did here. So that's kind of why that kind of thing happens. We see it in LEGO all the time. These sets uh, were always numbered. They had like a limited edition. Well, it, it said collector's edition, but they weren't limited editions. I mean, this one here is 33,269. So they, they just made as many as they could sell, which was pretty funny. All right, let's look at the back. Now back here, we see a different angle of these ships. Um, you know, you got to remember now, this is from 1994. It's 28 years ago. Uh, almost 30 years ago, which is hard to believe that movie's that old. Now, uh, you know, Diamond Select has kind of taken over these spaceship kind of uh, replicas, and they, theirs are far superior to what these were back in the day, but back then these were actually pretty decent. This one has three different, uh, or it looks like four different buttons, so it looks like it has uh, different sound effects on here. The nacelles will light up, and then of course you have the battle action where the pieces come off, and there's little buttons on the side that you push to make those things pop off. Um, they also advertise a couple more things here. I did have this engineering set. I also had the bridge set. And I had just about every spaceship they made. I sold all of it. <laughs> I, I uh, ended up selling it all when I went through my phase of I got to have my house back. <laughs> where I had to kind of get rid of all these collectibles. And um, since then, of course, the house is back to the way it was with all these collectibles everywhere. But oh well, what are you going to do? I'm sure all of you who do this kind of collecting understand what I'm going through. <laughs> All right, well, let's go ahead and open this up because I want to see how it looks after all these years. I mean, this is minty fresh in the box after 30 years. I can't believe nobody's even touched this in all those years. Okay, so I wasn't going to do an unboxing of this, but I figure what the heck, I may as well. So, uh, let's see, I already cut the tape over here. We'll go ahead and open this. And this is so weird. 28 years and nobody has ever opened this box. You can already see a nacelle right in there. Let's see, I can't remember how these were packaged. I think they were packaged pretty crazy back then. Oh, okay, well, it looks like it's, uh, let's see, is there anything in here? i to make sure. No, it looks like that's everything. Um, all right, so it looks like there's a lot of pieces and tape coming off here. Here's the stand. They do give you these nice uh, Delta Shield stands right there. And here's a couple of nacelles that are taped on here. And I should have brought a pair of scissors in here. Oh, it looks like some instructions. Got to have those instructions. And here is the ship itself. Ah, yeah. I forgot. They have all these crazy wires in here. All right. Oh, look at that. We can kind of see some of the damage right there and some of the weathering. All right. Let me see if I can pull all of this stuff off. Okay. So I've started to cut some of this tape. I got the nacelles loose right here. We can see what those look like. These, um, let me take these out. You can see they have these connectors right here, and they just snap in place. So these are very cool. Uh, ooh, look at that. There's some weathering on the back right there. 
All right, and then I already started kind of cutting this. Um, the best way to handle these wires is to just cut them. And it looks like I'm going to have to cut this tape. And here, too. It looks like I cut that one already. All right. So the, there's the uh, nacelle connections. Boy, they really package these. You know, I forgot. <laughs> Whenever I had to open one of these things, they always had just a ton of crazy packaging on this. Looks like there's some more tape over here, too. All right, well, let me see if I can uh, just rip this open, because I'm not going to keep this cardboard on the inside. Okay, all right, there we go. What do we got going on? Oh, I see. We still got some wires over here. Well, we'll just do the old snipperoo on these as well. These wires are pretty thin, so you can just cut right through them like that. At least they put plastic over the uh, the saucer. Oh, this looks like the actual stand, the strut piece for the stand. I think they also, if I can remember, maybe, oh, they already have it on here. So they have, they give you two different ways you can pose these. So you can have this plate on here if maybe you just want to uh, suspend it on the ceiling with maybe some thread or something. And then they also give you the stand that you put in to the, the bottom piece right here. You'll just insert that in there. So that's very nice. All right, let me see. I think I can just go ahead and start snapping the uh, nacelles together here. So let me try to get all that done. Okay, so let's take a look at what we got here. Um, so I got everything out of the uh, plastic. So you can see the bottom panel right here, which matches the one that's on the bottom here. Okay, and I'm gonna have to put three AA batteries in there. Here is the, uh, the base. So this just slides in like this. You just go forward and slide it in. Oops, try that again here. <laughs> and then this just clicks in like this. I think you just put it in. I think it clicked, if I can remember. Because it looks like there's a little bit of a... Hmm, maybe not. Maybe that's as far as it goes. Well, I'll work on that a little bit later to make sure. Um, I also want to show you, they got the two battle damage uh, panels right here. That's how these look. And they snap into these areas there. We also have some paperwork here. These are the instructions, which are pretty basic. I mean, we know how to put the batteries in. This here is kind of cool. This is some kind of a, a poster that I think may have been exclusive to this set. I'm not really sure. But it's pretty neat. It's a nice little piece of artwork. Yeah, I like that. There's nothing on the back there. And then, uh, let me see. Now, I, this is something I do not remember. There's actually stickers that you have to put on here. I do not remember having to put stickers on these sets. And it looks like they have everything. They even have the uh, transporter emitter thingamajiggers. Wow, they even have these. I do not remember this. I thought these already had the speed... The, uh, these stickers on here, but you know what? That's great. I mean, it'll at least make it look better because now that I'm looking at it, there is no markings on it. And this, this was a little thing that it came with that just kind of explains, um, I don't know if you'll be able to read that, but I think it explains how warp drive works or something like that. You can see all that. So yeah, it's kind of cool. I don't remember this either. But then again, that was 28 years ago. I don't remember what happened yesterday. <laughs> okay, well, um, let's see. These are just going to snap in place. You'll see the metal connectors, uh, I'm sorry, right here. So these will just snap in like this. Just got to make sure you put them on straight. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, they got to go on. It's a little easier to do this when I'm not having to worry about getting on the camera. You know, I wonder if it matters which one's which. No, they look like they're the same. Oh, there we go. Okay, yeah, that snaps in. Where's the other one? So we'll go and put these in place here. And, let's see. I don't remember all this, having to do all this from the 
first time around here. That one didn't really snap in place, but it looks like it's in. Hmm. Alright, well I guess we'll find out when we test it. Alright, so uh, let's see. I'm going to have to put some batteries in here. I think this just slides off. Is that how this works? Boy, I tell you, it probably would help if I read the instructions. All right, well, let me get the batteries in here, get it put on the stand. Let me get all the stickers put on, and we'll take a look at what it looks like. Oh, well, I just now slid this open, so I just wanted to show you. That's where the batteries go. All right, now let's get it put together. Okay, so here it is all put together. Uh, these stickers took uh, kind of a long time to put together. There's a lot on here. I mean, you can see there's the wording on here. They have the uh, transporter emitters. Yeah, I really don't remember putting stickers on this. If you guys have this, this, uh, this particular model, can you comment in the comments and tell me if you had stickers on yours? I could have sworn the stickers were already on here. Um, and I, I really don't remember putting on these ones, like these, these orange things here, because you actually have to, uh, it's one strip, and you actually have to cut it and then kind of bend the sticker around this this edge, because this edge actually kind of goes in. And you have to do that on all four of these. There's one here, one here, and then the instructions tell you to put it in the wrong spot. And then also the 10 forward windows. I really don't remember putting 10 forward windows on here. And once again, you got to cut that again, because see how that is, that uh, that looks right there? you got to cut it, and you got to bend the window sticker kind of down inside that groove. And that probably will eventually come you know, come off as time goes on. There's two more of these orange ones here. So yeah, I don't remember those at all. Um, yeah, it's just kind of weird. Uh, this one here, because that panel comes off, you're going to have to cut that. See how I had to slice that right there? And I also had to slice the Enterprise. So, um, and then the, yeah, this thing's, you know, it doesn't fit exactly right each time. Uh, there, I kind of straighten it out a little bit. But yeah, you're going to have to slice the uh, sticker to make that fit. Also, the USS Enterprise is supposed to go directly above the NCC 1701D, but there wasn't enough room in here to kind of put it there without it looking smushed, so I had to kind of put it up there. So, yeah, I'm trying to remember how all of this went. There's a sticker here. You got the uh, more of these transporter things. Those tiny red ones, oh my god. <laughs> those things are really a hassle, and there's a whole bunch of those on here, so you got to put all of those on. There's also some stripes on the back of the uh, um, impulse engines here. You got the main stripe running down the back. There's some more of those tiny red things. More uh, in transporter enhancers. The uh, little Enterprise. You know, on some of these stickers, they go over those ridges. And so it's not like a model kit where you can put uh, that solve set on there to make those stickers stay down into the uh, grooves. That's not kind of how that works, unfortunately. But they do go on pretty well. See, there's two of these. These bigger ones were pretty easy to put on. Let me show you the bottom. So down here, we got these. And those ones there. Those should actually be a little longer. I mean, it's not totally accurate, but it's okay. I mean, it was it's it's a toy. <laughs> you know, it's it, it's actually pretty pretty well done for the time. There's some more of those little red things. Some more stripes behind the uh, uh, impulse engines. The uh, I cut, I thought this part lit up, but I guess it doesn't. There's supposed to be two more of those little commas that you see on there, those red ones. There should be two more right here. There's one that should be on each end of the uh, phaser bank right there. There's a sticker here you got to put on. These ones here, uh, they're number 24. They don't even show in the instructions where they go, but I looked at my Diamond Select Enterprise, and they go on the side here. There's some more of those. See how many of those red things there are? There's a ton of them. Look how many are right there. <laughs> There's, they're really uh, fiddly because of how small they are. But the stickers stick on pretty good, considering they're 28 years old. The adhesive is still really well done. And there's two more that go on the uh, extra panel on there. Actually, there's three more that go on here. You got this pattern in the middle, which you can't put on this piece because the stand is right there. Now, I couldn't decide if I wanted to put those transporter things on this piece or this piece, um, but I, I have a feeling I'm not going to end up using this stand. I think I'm going to end up probably hanging this. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. I can always peel those off and put them on there if I need to, but yeah, you can see there's a ton of stickers on this thing. 
Okay, so I had to turn the lights down just a little bit so we can kind of see these nacelle lights better. So there's three buttons back here. I thought it was four, but it's three. And you have three different sound effects. This first one I think was like a red alert sound or something, but it's kind of annoying. So here, here we go with that. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, not a fan of that sound. Um, there's the uh, next one. That's cool. Photon torpedoes. And this one here is the same sound. Um, here, let me see if I can push this. It's kind of in an awkward spot. Okay, so you'll notice that the uh, nacelles didn't light up for that. That's the same sound effect that you get for these things. Okay, so let me turn this. Now this is where the battle damage occurs. So you got these little hidden buttons right here. See these? These are really cool. So when you push this, you have to kind of push it in far to make sure the sound gets activated and this panel is going to pop off. And there you can see the red light blinking down inside there and you can see the battle damage. And they blink for quite a while actually. It looks pretty good though. I mean, you, it, you know, it's, it's toy-like but you can actually see like the different uh, decks and levels in there. I think that's really cool. And then here's the other one. So we'll get the battle damage on this one here. <laughs> and there we go. And that one's got like a larger section right in there. I think that looks really cool though. So you can kind of see what that looks like from the top. Yeah, that's neat. So those will stay kind of lit for a little while. Now if you push that one that has that same sound effect, that third button, it actually makes these blink again. See them? So it's actually the same sound, but it, that sound will not make the uh, nacelles light up. So I do remember that. Uh, you know, this is kind of like a, I'm kind of remembering some of this stuff. But I still don't remember the stickers. But see how I had to uh, cut these stickers in order for that panel to come off? That's the only way you're going to make that. That's the only way you're going to make that work. Because uh, I didn't mean to bump that. See how that's kind of in there? So once you get these centered, that one from 1701 goes right down that center line. That's how you're going to line that up. And then the T is down that same center line. And that will help you line those up. But uh, yeah, you know, it's not bad looking. Considering this is a 28-year-old thing. I mean, I, I like I said, I used to absolutely love these Playmate ships. I really, I just loved every one of them that they produced. Alright, so now just for comparison purposes, I wanted to compare the Playmates version with the Diamond Select version. So this one came out, you know, I don't remember what year this came out. It's, uh, it's been out for a long time and I don't think they're producing these anymore. In fact, I looked on eBay and these are going for kind of a, a large chunk of money now. It's like a couple hundred bucks or more. And uh, you can definitely see the difference in the detailing. They're about the same size. I'd say the Diamond Select one is slightly, slightly bigger. But I mean, look at the detail on this versus that. But of course, this one is the Battle Damage version. But you got to remember, once again, 1998 is when this one was made. But, uh, you know, it's still pretty cool. This one here, um, I don't have the batteries in it. It actually had uh, batteries in the uh, battle section down here, the secondary hull area, and it had its own batteries for the saucer, which went in this little compartment uh, right in here. I cannot remember which size button cell batteries. I think it uses three, and that's why I don't have the batteries in here. But uh, you could actually separate the saucer. You can just pull it off. It's got really super strong magnets right in here, and you just pull it off, and when you do it, it makes that kind of rumble sound, very similar to the sound of when those pop off like the uh, saucers becoming, you know, detached, and then it clicks back on with the magnets. So uh, that's why it had its own power source, because the, um, the uh, impulse engines would light up on their own. And then you had this section that also lit up on, the, on its own as well. And then the button to activate the sounds was the bridge. You, could, you can see this is a button right here. So you could push that. So yeah, the Diamond Select one was definitely much, much better as far as the way it's painted and the way it looked. But of course, this came out years later. So, you know, they're going to, of course, improve on it. For the time, this was actually a pretty good one. And if you got the one that wasn't battle damaged, it looked, you know, pretty much like this without all the scarring on it. But I do like how they painted it. It looks pretty cool how they did that. And I do love that, those, you know, pieces that fly off, even though it's not accurate we didn't actually see that occur in the movie. Uh, it's still a, a pretty cool feature. And that's why I kind of wanted that one back because I like that it had that kind of a feature. This one here though, I would say is still probably the best one that's been produced as far as uh, a toy, I guess you could call this. Um, you know, it's more of a collectible, but uh, 
by far this one looks a whole lot better but you can see the difference there on the instructions here they do show you where all those stickers go I had to cross them off as I went so I could just kind of keep track a little bit better but you can see how many there are there's just a ton that's the top and then that's the bottom so you're gonna spend a little bit of time putting those on and trying to get them on nice and straight so that everything looks right but it definitely does look better with those stickers on you you definitely need those so there we go, the Playmates Battle Damaged Enterprise D from Star Trek Generations from 1994. Um, really cool, you know, it's kind of a nice little walk down memory lane. I'm glad I was able to find another one of these. Really surprised to find that it was still in the box. On eBay you can find these. Uh, there's quite a few of them that are floating around. Most of them used, but there's a few new sets. Um, they go anywhere, I would say, between $45 and maybe $75. Um, Anything higher than that, I'm not really sure you'd want to pay for it. Those are the ones that are new in the box. I only saw maybe three of those. So it was really cool to find this still in the box. It's so weird. This has never been out of the box in 28 years. This is the first time it's seen the light of day. And that just blows my mind. But it's actually a pretty decent thing. I mean, you know, it's <laughs> a little annoying with that sound. And it's a little limited on the sounds. The Diamond Select ones at least had some dialogue, you know. But I think, of course, the best feature is the battle damage pieces coming off, except you're supposed to push it. Oh, you know why that didn't go off? Because it was still blinking from the first time I pushed that. I'll wait till that light stops blinking in there. You can kind of see it. Here, I'll pick this up and we can take a better look at it. One more time here. Here's the uh, other one right here. There we go. That piece really goes flying, too. You can see the little post right there that pushes it off. So it's got some pretty powerful springs down inside there. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm really glad I got this, and uh, I'm kind of sorry I sold my original one. It, was, it wasn't until maybe a few months later that I realized, hmm, yeah, I shouldn't have sold that one. <laughs> that was probably one of the ones I really liked, so I was glad to get it. But a little walk down memory lane for those of you who maybe have had this uh, this enterprise or maybe you still got it and if you do still got it like I said uh, can you comment in the comments and let me know if you had to put these stickers on because I honestly don't remember putting all those on there or maybe I didn't put them all on I really don't know I don't remember having to cut them that's for sure for that panel all right well anyway that's it for this video I hope you enjoyed it and if you did don't forget to hit the like button and also subscribe too I'd very much appreciate it so thank you very much for watching I'll see you on the next video and have a good one